I, I can't believe I would tell you in such short notice that you couldn't talk about something. So it must have been someone other than me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the, an the annual, uh, the annual has a bunch of cool stuff. The annual has uh, Superman's New 52 first exposure to Kryptonite and to the Kryptonite Man, where K Man is in now. Um, it has the new direction for Steel that uh, nobody was really kind of expecting, but was actually set up in all those back episodes. Um, it's got Luther, it's got Lois, it's got Jimmy, it's got Superman. You know, it's a Superman. It's about as classic as you can get. It's got all those elements. That's all I wanted to draw. See if they hit each other. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want? You just like to mention that the backup to this annual is about the most deranged thing you'll ever see. It's very unusual. It's written by Max Landis with Ryan Superpower. We didn't really talk about it. <coughs> Thanks, Bob. We got awesome. it. Yeah. Well, tell us more. Okay. Apparently, apparently, our microphones are set as loud as possible. So we have to speak directly into them, or else we'll be unheard by the people in the back. That's good. Maybe that's good. You're right. I, I've done panels with them before, but I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Moving over to Superman. Well, the we picture is more interesting. Team, so we'll go with the yes. yes. We'll go with the editor. Sorry, guys. Yes. Anyway, have you guys picked up Superman number zero? Yeah. What do you think? So that's Scott Lobel with Kenneth Rockefeller, and I think, you know, uh, it's tough. He has great stuff on, on Superman already, and these guys have to, you know, go with that. So we're bringing in, you know, little guest stars like the Justice League to help with something really big. Our storyline is called Hell on Earth, um, and we mean it. It's going to be crazy stuff. It's really helpful. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> next. Can I say we have Supergirl coming in to help or not? Um, the whole thing is, um, if you notice, our cast doesn't exactly get along like a big old Superman family, and you'll see some dramatic changes in the storyline that's coming up, especially with um, our villain. This is one of our cool things that we're. Using with the issue 13, you'll start seeing Superman testing his powers, what are the limits. Um, you think you know him, but not. You'll see he's a little um, stuff in his way. We also have the Superboy annual. Yes, 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 It rolls right out of the Hell Earth story and kind of bridges before our next big thing, which we'll get to in a little bit. And it sort of fills in more blanks on his backstory. There's a lot of stuff we haven't really addressed yet. This just makes it moving too fast. But secret answers will be yours, if you can hear me. <laughs> and then Superboy. I can see it appear in the number of bunch of No, no, interestingly, <laughs> he's like posing as his favorite hero, of Superman. No, we, we put off Superboy and Superman. As long as we could, that's going to be a special moment. And not a nice one, and there's a reason he's wearing a Superman suit. It's not a particularly good reason. That came out wrong. It's a, I can't possibly fix that, so I'll <laughs> But he's going to find himself teaming up with Batman here, and what you might recognize maybe as something in the art that you might have seen before in the past. He's going to probably like Batman a lot better than he likes Superman. We will now pause for this commercial break. This is a way, right? Yes, this is part of the uh, event that we're doing on the three super books in January, the number 16, so you haven't seen all those covers yet. You'll see them a couple of weeks online. And it's sort of the climax of our story and thrusts us into the next large story where that's going to involve the This is just weird. Yep. <laughs> So unprofessional. All right, next up we have a look at, at Supergirl number 16. So this is um, our little chapter in, uh, in the Eleanor yeah. Cross work. It's, it's called The Fastest Girl in the World. I just decided that right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Um, and uh, you're going to find out what that means. As you can see, there's a mysterious figure standing. 
relates to all of these issues. Is, he right is, right right? is it Wally West? It is Wally West. Awesome! Now, you, you have to wait for those kind of questions uh, until, until Dan and Dio's here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how was it trying to play? The great, uh, we had a lot of fun going to the for now, and uh, I was looking forward to having a guest artist, a uh, guest character on the book, and I'm really happy that it's in the flash. And it was absolutely thrilling to draw this cover, so I didn't look like it. Thank you. Alright, what do we have next? I believe we have from an upcoming Action Comics. Uh, we want to talk to you about a man who's going to be writing some Action Comics stories for us, uh, Mr. Andy Diggle. Andy? You know, I, I believe you have an artist for, this, for your part of this stuff as well, don't you? Yeah, well, it's a real Tony, Tony Daniel is up here as well. So yeah, no, it's, it's like ridiculously exciting to be, uh, to be, uh, to be working with Superman and ridiculously terrifying to be following Grant Morrison. So, <laughs> very big shoes to fill and skinny white jeans. <laughs> what are you trying to believe in? <laughs> All of you. <laughs> and the uh, people have been, uh, been talking a lot about the, uh, the costumes Superman's wearing in this, in this great piece that Tony's uh, put together for us. Uh, has everybody read Superman issue zero? Yeah. 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 The last page of the main story in that one, and it gives you a little clue as to where this costume comes from, but also raises a whole bunch of other questions about where it is, why you wear this costume, which we need to see in the story that comes after that one. It's been still across several times for all. Tony, any intimidation from you? Uh, you you're worried about. Uh, you know, Grant sending the X-ray vision towards you and harming you. Well, with with Grant, I never can say it's bad. So, um, I, you know, I, I gotta say that I I, I wanted to work with Andy for uh, quite a while, and um, uh, so this is this is a great opportunity. So uh, I'm just grateful. I, you know, I'm I'm excited. I think. Start working in the pub immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she hasn't really talked to anybody about his working style yet, but I, I've seen pubs all around the world working with artists. So, <laughs> no, I, I just really excited to uh, to get started on it and uh, to uh, let some uh, ginger kind of crazy muscles out of it. Uh, so I haven't flexed for quite a while. Uh, so we have 
you know, we have a we have the writer and the artist available to, to join us up here. Please welcome.
young part is going to be living. And, and we we're going to meet this new love, who's not that. <laughs> 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 and it's not loaded. So you may introduce to a very different romantic uh, person for part. Uh, not very much unlike anything that anybody is having for so. You know, and you're also going to get to see Pa explain the birds and the bees and men of steel to Young Park Camp, which is the most awkward thing ever. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, he gets to face his first supervillain. And the main theme of this book is about power. How power corrupts and how power can fail you. And the, the parasite pretty much it, uh, shows that and it shows Clark that you know, he's kind of gotten used to having all this power, but what happens when come, someone comes in and leaves it away? Which you get to see a very human person. It looks good for nice. parasite. It looks very parasitic. And they fight. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. True. <laughs> There's only the first bout, and uh, he kind pretty of much, uh, Superman's going to get his butt cake. Sorry to spoil that. And <laughs> what that happens after that, it gets very interesting. <clears throat> Especially since there's a negative chase scene. With the parasite. <laughs> right. Next. That's all we got. That's all we got. That's all I'm going to say. But it's, <laughs> it's very cool. So, you can look out. When is it going to be on sale, Bob? Soon. <laughs> <laughs>
And then Dan suggested, well, okay, is there somewhere you can tie this into? You know, Jim's created his new costume, you can tell the story of that. <coughs> then there was a couple of filming issues happened. So once I got those filming issues, I realized I'd set up a long term plot line. You kind of, you know, put myself in a position where I had to do 17 issues to back my story up. So it was kind of surprising. We came in to do six and we were doing 17. And, uh, it's, it's been fun, it wasn't what I expected. You know, the, the ones that I think I actually enjoyed the most were all the little one offs. You know, probably if I did it again, I would do it if the issue was a one off. I think it works really well with Superman. And something that did an all star as well. So I guess if there was anything at all, the changes that I would make every single story kind of stand on its own. But, but apart from that, I've just had a really good time on it. I'm glad it's finished because I've got a lot of history to tell in the last three issues. We've tried to cover the entire five years between Superman when he started and Superman where he is now in the DCU. So we're going to see a lot of uh, big moments that haven't been seen yet in, in that story. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be glad to, to do it because the history's been exploding in my brain for the last year and a half and I just want to get on with it. That's great. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And uh, we'll stop by and get a copy of your book. Uh, Jim, thank you very much. That was already worth $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, the team team Titans, 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 so I was wondering, especially seeing the Earth One imagery, is there even a one percent chance that you would go back to the classic costume for next year? Uh, <laughs> Co-publisher and designer of costumes. <laughs> <laughs> really cover everybody. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think history's all about looking back. I mean, you know, um, great thing about these characters with this rich history, it, it gives you the firmament to build your stories from. So, I mean, we're, you know, we're stepping into some very good shoes, the work that Grant's done on action. And, and uh, when we go forward, I, to me, to keep these characters relevant and modern, I think you have to be kind of fearless and keep looking forward. You know, recognizing the past history and incorporating at the same time, I think you just got to keep looking, facing forward, keep moving, because that's where the future is and that's where the excitement is going to be. And I understand your connection or your, your desire for, for some of the uh, trappings and gold costumes and things like that, but but trust me, in like 75 years, they'll be pining away for this costume right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're going to have in 75 years, but you know, it's all relative. So, you know, I, I have to add, I think that the basics of the costume are still there. I mean, you still got a red cape, you still got the symbol on the chest, you got the colors where you're supposed to be. You know, I mean, you have to evolve these characters, and, and you know, if you go back and look at the original iteration of Superman, it doesn't look a whole lot like you know, the version that you're, that you're considering the classic costume. So, I think evolution is a good thing. I don't think you should shy away from it. Well, thank you. Uh, hey, thanks again, all you guys. Uh, I'm really excited about the new stuff. Um, my question is specifically for Grant. Now, after Action Comics, uh, and with All-Star Superman, and all the stuff that you know, main continuity and Justice League, you've really gotten to write Superman at every major stage of his life, and the character's been very different in each one of those stages. I'm just wondering which one was your favorite to write, uh, or that you felt most connected to, and why? Uh, I, I guess my favorite Superman is, is the all-star type of Superman, where he's kind of at the very peak of his powers. No, that just really appeals to me because it's quite a hard character to write, someone who's actually genuine and good. And, and that's, it, was, it was a lot of fun to do that because it was almost like imagining a, you know, like imagine the Buddha or imagine Jesus or something. You put yourself in the, the place of someone who loves us that much and who is that good a person. It's, it's, it's not like a human being, but we can learn a lot from that. So I kind of found the most fun doing that. But I also did, I, I have enjoyed doing the youngest one. And seeing as if money doesn't have it all worked to together because that kind of kind of allows for a different type of story to it. So as you say, I'll be lucky enough to, to do the character of all different kinds in his life, at times in his life. But the, the, the super powerful Superman is what appears to be most. The guy that can do anything, but still has all
No, I think he's both. And the thing for me that defines Superman in a lot of ways is that whether he's Superman or whether he's Clark Kent, he's not only good, but he's so good that he makes all the people around him better. Um, he gives everybody something to aspire to, whether you know he's saving the day in, the, you know, in his underwear, or whether he's Clark Kent, you know, crusading reporter, or just some guy who's going to give money to a guy in the street and, and know his name. Um, but either way, he's a good guy, you know, and that and that to me is the core of it. And, and everything else is the elaboration and this all the stuff that's built up over the years. But when it comes down to it, he's a good guy. Sort of, there was a conflict there. He wasn't sort of a symbol that everyone got behind. And the idea that 
who he is um, also is a little bit dangerous. Um, so one of the things we'll be playing with in our story, I think, is that for me at least one of the things that makes him so heroic is his restraint. That he does have the ability, and when he gets angry, probably the urge to reshape the world and do things that would sort of um, usurp, I think, you know, human uh, uh, authority. I mean, he could do those things. But he doesn't, you know, and he looks to us um, and, and looks also to inspire us to be the best we can be without interfering. And there's a lot of Achilles heel in that book, too. There's a lot of vulnerability, I think, in that, and heroism at the same time. In the same way with writing Batman, you're trying to look for something that you think is sort of the, the center of what makes him both heroic and flawed. You know, so that's that's a lot of what our story is going to support. That's a lot of guys. All right. We appreciate your questions. We've got, we got, we got, got a few more question time, so we'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, yes, um, first of all, Graham, it's good to see you again. I saw you here today at Comic Con. And I want to direct this question out of towards Graham or Scott. Scott, I love your take on that. And what is the kind of thing? You guys each have a specific take on the characters in your own form. What is your motivation? How do you go about your specific study of the character compared to all other people study? Whether it be movies, comics, or whatever it is, I mean, other than the answer. I just read Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Second issue of it, actually. I, I, well, you know, I'm sure you can find someone else who will help you out. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, guys. Um, like I said, I've got this definitely a dream to teach this with man, and I'm glad he's in such great hands with everybody that's on this panel. Um, my question is with the Hell on Earth storyline is that, is Hell going to be like his new big villain, like a uh, la Doomsday, where he's like this like, guy that comes back? Every once in a while, consequences and more. After how long the book is gone, off into the universe and never see him again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you have the event with these covers to Superman 13, the uh, Hell and Earth lead in there. There you go. Thank you. Those, we don't usually have, I mean, that's our whole new collection we're starting out, giving away covers. All right, over here. First, I, uh, I want to thank you guys. Uh, one of the questions I had coming in was when the Superman family would finally meet, and that question's been answered. I'm sort of glad there's a little drama in there, especially because uh, Superboy has always been such a sort of conflicted character because of where he comes from. Or in the New 52, where we assume he comes from. Um, but I, I was wondering, in Scott and Jim's project, if that Superman book is going to exist within the 52 continuity, or is the story going to be sort of outside? No, it's going to exist in continuity. All right, thank you. If you'd like an uh, action one, just file one up here. And uh, we're here on this side. Hi, um, this is questions directed towards um, Scott and Jim, or anyone in the panel can jump in. Um, can we see a Majestic versus Superman fight? <laughs> 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 
looks hazy. <laughs> so, that's my answer. So, <laughs> the future looks hazy from Young Magic 8 Ball was the answer. Uh, if you'd like an action one, please come up and please ask your question. Thank you. Um, we've been talking a lot about Superman's 75th anniversary. It's also the 75th anniversary of Clark Kent. Um, so, I was wondering for Scott and for Andy, how will Clark Kent factor into your view of Superman, uh, the whole of the character, in your lens? Um, well, for us, I mean, Clark plays a very big role. I, I love doing that with Bruce as well in, in Batman. I think, you know, you, you try and really, with, with Bruce, it really is <laughs> sort of, um, in what we've been doing in Batman at least, um, him trying to kind of come out of a shell and accept Bruce Wayne as, as an important part of who he is. Whereas with Clark, I think you almost take it for, for granted that, that it's so seamless. But I think the story that we're going to do is, is going to sort of cause conflict for him emotionally in, in both sides of that, where the, the challenge he's going to face is, is going to be sort of earth shatteringly big in terms of the, the villain um, and the power set that guy has so that Superman is really challenged both emotionally because he's so vulnerable to him, but what he stands for and what he needs um, and, and what he represents is going to challenge Clark to his core as well. So, you know, I think for me, those are my favorite stories where, you know, the character is challenged sort of emotionally, psychologically, and, and, and sort of big and kind of on plot way as well. So, <coughs> that's the best answer I can give. Perfect. All right. Thank you. If you like one of these fine comics, over here, sir. Hey guys, um, this is the record to everybody. But, um, I know, like, over the last 75 years, Superman has adopted to the times, you know, what's going on with the times. And his personality has, you know, changed along the way. Um, that's why I don't know that, um, whatever happened to the Chief of Justice the American way. I should have, um, it's really good to know, like, the no violence thing. So, how do you guys, like, with the new continuity, how are you guys planning to uh, modernize Superman to the 21st century? I mean, what we have now, um, with all Twitter and all everything else going on? Well, that's that's an iPod. <laughs> 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 I guess we've already seen a degree to which uh, we've, with the uh, changing laws of society, the technology being reflected in the changes that take place. Like, like, like I was saying, you know, being into TV news and so on and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, one of the things I'm looking forward to, what I've got to tell you about the last question, but uh, I'm looking forward to not just doing the, the kind of huge galactic scale and space adventure Superman stuff, but also very much in a Clark Kent journalist. Um, I think, you know, now, I think things like you know, the end of the internet, which and all the rest of it, is, is completely up and you know, create a huge upheaval in the new journal. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, I, I'd like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to tackling that, that aspect of, you know, how, how you make life in front of the world. It's like the first time I've got that we need to hold on. No, I'm for yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, our story is, 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 um, is about that in a lot of ways. It's about Superman in the modern world and he tries to bring in issues and things that are, that are relevant now to, to, to sort of challenge him in terms of his, his, his relevance. So, we'll be a lot of that. Guess what? All right, we've got time for two more questions. So that's one in each microphone. So we'd like to thank everybody who had a question but we won't get to. I want to put a lot of pressure on the two of you to make sure that you have the perfect, positive, upbeat questions <laughs> to end this wonderful DC Lead 52 Superman panel. All right, and the gentleman over here on this side he says he's not going positive at all, so we're going to we're going to close with you, and we're going to start with him. So he's full right there, man, in the purple shirt, and uh, you're, you're 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 the next to the last. You, how basically characters are no longer existing in reality? I like the last question. Okay, okay. no pressure. Right? Oh no, um, there's a tremendous amount of pressure now. <laughs> um, well, first off, I, I, I just want to echo what everyone said. Thank you for, for being an awesome dream team and pouring your hearts into this character that means so much to all of us. I look forward to what's coming next. Uh, I'm a small town uh, English teacher from Maine, and uh, I have a huge bookshelf with all my comics and graphic novels on it. It's the reason I'm a, I mean, Jim Lee and Graham Morrison, the reason I'm a high school English teacher, and I, I, I do art on Saturdays. But besides that, um, 
I, I just wanted to share with Graham that I, you know, I have a, a girl who loves Superman. And she gets teased all the time by, you know, the, the, the Batman in the and the Avengers. Superman <laughs> And she stormed into my room one day uh, last year and pulled off the, uh, the first trade from All Star Superman. And she flipped to the page where uh, Superman sweeps in at the last minute to save a seemingly random girl who's about to do suicide. And she showed it to the class and she said, this is why I love Superman. And uh, it, it just, it was happening. Thank you. Thank you. 